Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor here with another short screencast about JavaScript terminology. In the previous screencast, we talked about arrays and objects as storage containers for data and why and how you use both. In this screencast, I want to go back a second and just talk about objects in general, because when you first start working with JavaScript, rarely do you need to create a new object of data. Typically, you're working with the built-in objects. And by built-in objects, I'm referring to the big three that you work with immediately in JavaScript, the window, the document, and the console objects. And they're already in the environment available for you to use. The window object you can think of as the entire window, and you can do things such as use methods from that object to do things on the web page. For example, we could say window.alert high world. You'll see this a lot in the first chapter of JavaScript textbooks so that you know your web page is reading that script correctly. And this is what an alert does. It gives you a little dialog box. I could also say window prompt, please tell me your name. And as I refresh my web page, first I get my alert, then I get my prompt for my name. Now I haven't saved that data to a variable, so it's going nowhere in the environment. This does prove that my web page is being loaded in my browser and that script is working. Now because the window object is the default object, you'll often see that window dot, that object dot, part of the statement deleted so that the statement is simply shorter. But we know alert and prompt are methods because we see the parentheses. And when you do not see an object name dot in front of the method, you know you're working off the default object, the window object. Save and refresh. I'm getting my alert. And now I'm getting my prompt. That's the window object. We use it for the alert and the prompt method. Also, the confirm method is also very commonly used, confirm, so I'll save that. Here's my alert with a message. Here's my prompt for my information, and here's my seed. Okay, we'll return true, and cancel will return false. And if I wanted to save those values, of course, I would have to declare variables and assign those variables to the information that's returned back into the JavaScript environment. Now that we know about the window object and how it can create new pieces of information for the user on the window, let's move on to the console object. You open it up with a right click of the web page and then inspect in most modern browsers. The Elements tab is great for looking at your HTML and CSS. But the console tab is where we're going to live as JavaScript developers because it provides so much great information. For example, if I refresh this web page, Hi world, on please tell me your name, I'm going to put in Goofy this time and click OK and proceed, I'm going to click OK. Now those two statements have been made, I can go into my console and find out the value of those variables. If I type in name, the console is returning Goofy. If I type in confirmation, the console is returning true. So the console provides great information about what a variable or an object contains. It also shows you error messages. So as a JavaScript developer, you're really not going to program without leaving that console window open. Console is also great for logging information out of your script. For example, when I create variables, I often like to log them out immediately to make sure I really know what that variable contains. So if I log out confirmation here, save, fresh, then if I click OK, I'm going to get true. If I refresh this page and click Cancel, confirmation contains false. I oftentimes will even add a little text here, a string confirmation, followed by the variable name, and that comes out real nice in the console. It tells me the variable name and the value of the variable. I really like that combination as well. The console object is also your great friend, and you're going to want to know that log method. Now, the console, because it reads variable names and objects, you can just type in an object and type in the window object, hit enter, and get a list of all the different methods, such as alert, and such as confirm, that object has available to it. Now, methods on an object are created with the function keyword, and that's why we see that little F here. So the window 
object, even though I've only shown you three commonly used methods, has a ton of methods. It has alert, EOB, blur, and it has many different properties as well. The F is there, it's a method. If the F is not there, then it means it's a property, and that property could contain a single piece of information, or it could contain another object with more properties and methods. So it gets real deep real quickly. But what I'm trying to show you in this YouTube is just the common core things that you need to know about the window and the console object. And this log method is just your best friend. Now, the biggest object that you'll constantly be working with is the document object because the document object represents the document itself. And after all, that's what JavaScript's initial purpose in life was to modify the document in response to users doing things on the page, like clicking buttons. So you're constantly working with the document object. Now, the document object is technically a property of the window object. And here it is, the document. And here are all the different documents, properties, and methods that it also has available to you. One weird thing about the console here is if you just type in document, because it's an object, you'd think that you'd be able to see all of its properties and methods. It actually shows you the HTML. It's just the way the developer's tools work. It is an object. If I type in document dot. Now I'm going to see in this pop-up list all of its properties and methods. It doesn't distinguish between the properties and the methods, but at least it shows them all to me. That's one little anomaly about how objects are displayed in this window. When you're working with the web page, you are constantly working with the document's object because, after all, you want to change things on that web page. So, for example, if I wanted to change this paragraph of information, I would be working with the document object because it's a piece of the document. I would have to go identify it with some method, and I'm going to use the get element by ID method, and its ID is info. And then I can access a property of that, such as text content, and assign that to something else. And I'm going to go ahead and comment out that information so that we do not get prompted with that when we refresh the page. And there I see I've changed the text. Or I could change the text color. I could add a class if I had a CSS file associated with this. And since I don't have a class, I'm going to go directly into the style property and change the color to something very easy to understand, red, save, refresh. When you're working with JavaScript, rather than worrying about creating new objects, if you simply realize that there's three big objects that are built into the environment that you'll probably be working with for quite a while before you need to create custom objects, it just simplifies life. You saw in the console here, there is a number of properties and methods available to the document object. And so you might say, well, how am I ever going to learn all of these things? Well, you just learn which ones are most common by using it. But for new folks, I highly recommend W3 Schools. And if I go to W3 Schools and I simply type in something like document object then I find that W3Schools does a great job of just narrowing this down to most likely what you need to know. So they are listing some of the popular methods. We know methods are followed by parentheses and properties that you're most likely going to need. Go to document object and I add the keywords MDN. I'm going to go to the Mozilla Developers Network documentation. When you can read this documentation, you have arrived because this will be every piece of information about that construct in all of its technical glory. So those are the first three built-in objects that you'll get to use. They're just sitting there in the environment simply because you're using a script inside a web page. If you have an understanding of those three objects as a new JavaScript developer, you're well on your way. Thank you.